you know what other company is a fan of demos? Nintendo. Oh, oh, perfect transition. Uh, perfect okay. segue. We Thank got you. there. Thank yeah, you. We got there, Camille. Yeah, <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> um, so last week, Nintendo had uh, their Indie World for April, which is like their showcase for a bunch of indies coming to the Nintendo Switch. And I feel like <laughs> we'll see how this discussion goes, because Indies is always, a you know, an interesting place because some people play Indies, some people don't. Um but I feel like I'm going to get you guys guys excited about some of these. So uh, okay. I'll just go through the list of what was announced. So we had Road 96, which is kind of like a mix of an exploration, puzzle-solving adventure game. Um, and that is coming to the Nintendo Switch later in the year. Of course, now you know to expect later in the year, not specific dates, uh, because we are dealing with a Nintendo, and we usually don't get specific dates. Um, the big one, o- Oxen Free 2 Lost Signals was announced. Um, um, Steve, you're really excited yeah. for that one. This was such a surprise for me. Yeah. I I didn't think we'd ever see an Oxen Free sequel, nor did I think we needed one. But as soon as I heard the music, as soon as I saw the cinematics, I was like, okay, I'm in. I'm 100% sold. Yeah, this is the one they like teased at the end. You know, the, yeah. they they did the whole, and that's it for the showcase. Wait a second, one more thing, and Which then was a little cheesy. <laughs> they did like the distortion of the screen and everything. I was like, all right, here we go. But then as soon as I heard the music and saw, I was like well played <laughs> yeah you're like i'm happy and you know yeah. i'll give in to the cheese no matter how many times they do it uh, nintendo yeah. actually has a huge track record of using that cheesy line over and over right. again but i'm here for it um we also got ollie ollie world uh which to me is Play kind ollie, of ollie. so much <laughs> really it is i i don't often have a nostalgia for arcade style games this feels like an arcade style skate. Looks really like, cool. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's so, it's yeah. like one of those games you literally play for 30 minutes when you're relaxing and like you can just pick it up, put it down and you've walked away with 30 minutes of fun. You know, I've ended up playing it for hours and hours, but it's really just like, it's a well done game for how I guess like not low effort, but you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> you would expect it to be a lower quality game, but it's not. It, yeah. It's right mm. par with a lot of their other indie titles. The, That's my little piece about Ollie Ollie. No, it honestly, <laughs> no, it like, like this looks like it's a mix of Adventure Time um, animation, which like I'm a huge fan of Adventure Time. So I'm already on board with that. I love skateboarding, can't skateboard very well, but I mean, in game, hopefully I can. And I could really see this, you know, on mobile as well. I feel like this would be mm-hmm. really cool on mobile. I'm um, not just on the switch just as Malik mm-hmm. mentioned it's like just seems really chill you know you don't have to really worry about too much um and that's coming in winter as we saw right there in the uh, b-roll um mm-hmm. so I'm excited about that one now this next one okay yes um we like okay firstly this is gonna hit on your nostalgia you're gonna be thinking about this um as we finish up the squad cast later today you're gonna be thinking about it when you go to bed you're gonna be thinking about tomorrow (laughs) just because it's so long overdue they announced teenage mutant ninja turtles shredders revenge and this is like a beat-em-up like turtles in time this is something that is long overdue it's kind of like a homage to like arcade classics well, Malik kind of brought it up just moments ago. I mean, it's pure nostalgia for arcade games, and that's exactly what you're getting from from the visuals of this game, the way it yep. plays. I'm all about it. Mm-hmm. I so okay. I do I even have I don't have it on my desk, but so I obviously I'm in the states, Arizona. Mm-hmm. They don't they, represent. They don't, yep. they don't believe in in anything that science <laughs> says, but it's fine. <laughs> um, so me and uh, my girlfriend, and then one of my friends who lives in California, who I hadn't seen in a long time, we got together, uh, wore a mask, and we went to this arcade bar. And mm-hmm. my girlfriend uh, played Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game, for mm-hmm. the first time. And she's like, this is pure chaos. And I was like, you're right. They, like, there aren't games anymore that's like pure chaos. Every game wants it to be like so precise and yeah like got all these like little mechanics that fit well together you got to parry sure. dodge and roll and i'm like i have missed just pure arcadey chaos and to do it with the teenage mutant ninja turtles what a better way mm-hmm. yeah I mean, we kind of got that with Battletoads last year. Yes. That was like the closest we've gotten to it in years, in my opinion, anyways. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was Streets of Rage 4, but I don't really have a a tie to that series. But Battletoads was fun, but 
and then the uh, re-release of Scott Pilgrim as well. That's true. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, that that's a yeah. like a really good um, beat 'em up as well. But it, but yeah, go ahead, Caboose. I, I was just gonna say it just goes to show that like there's still always a place for yeah. these kinds of games. You know, like it doesn't matter like if they're if they feel old. It doesn't matter if they feel dated. If they're just side scrolling beat 'em ups, people will always want to like jump in and play games like these. Mm-hmm. You know? And and I'm gonna talk about another game that I feel like was a throwback, and this was a game like I was like, what is the, like w- great? But I didn't even think Nintendo would go there, and this is House <laughs> the House of the Dead remake. Like yeah. this was such a random announcement. I love House of the Dead. I love you know mm-hmm. anything that could bring me back to an arcade because you know those are really hard to find. Um, yep. But this is just a game that. If you've played a shooter in an arcade, you've probably played House of yep. the Dead. Absolutely. Yep. Right? Um, so, 100%. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's it's interesting because, Kabis, you mentioned, like, I people should realize there's a place for these games. And when I was thinking about it more, when I saw Battletoads and I saw House of the Dead, I was like, Nintendo's doing something right. And, like, with the Joy-Cons, why can't we see more shooters? Like, why can't we see a virtual cop? I mean, Hmm. I would love a virtual cop remakes on the Nintendo Switch. I think that'd be really interesting to do. You know, just bring everything that they got at Dave and Buster's and put it on the Switch. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we're not going anywhere, really. We're all stuck at home, so. Exactly. (laughs) Camille, you brought up like how you didn't think Nintendo would go this way. I didn't either. But when you compare like Resident Evil to like this, this seems more like a Nintendo thing. Yes. You know, it's super sure. arcadey, not really horror scary. You're just shooting zombies. And it's it's so cool to see Nintendo doing this stuff and actually branching out, like going yeah. beyond their brand a little bit this mm-hmm. year. Yeah, and I mean, if Nintendo could partner with more like arcade titles, just bring it all to the Switch, I will be super happy. I'm pretty sure we'll see people customize, like do custom cabinets to put their Switch in and make it like a real thing. Oh, that'd be so that cool. Would be Wouldn't cool. that be cool uh, to see? I, I think so. Um, like Nintendo bring back. No way that someone's not making that. I would exactly. love that. That would be super cool. Imagine if they brought back the Simpsons arcade game. Oh, oh man. Oh, okay. That'd be fun. Camille, wait. <laughs> Hold on. I thought Camille wasn't down for that. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> no. Worried. No, no, no. I am down for I love the Simpsons, man. Like, it's just hitting on, like, tugging on the heartstrings because it's like all those games, I don't think the younger generation um, <laughs> that really hasn't experienced an arcade setting. Right. really understands what that's like yeah you could yeah. go to dave and buster's or do they even have palladium still i don't know palladium they closed it oh they closed year. it or 2019 i uh, think it's sad rip stadium um but you know i feel like it's really hard for the younger generation to understand what that culture is like unless you go yeah. to like japan and even their arcades are closing down um right. and there's just something like arcades were before my time, but because they were still open, my friends and I, we after getting like some bubble tea, that's where we would hang out because there was really nothing to do up here in the boonies, <laughs> you know, north of <laughs> Toronto, right? So, yeah. um, it's just there's just so much fun that comes from that. Like even if they do an initial D, like the arcade. Oh, don't play with my heartstrings! Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I'd bring yeah, back my driver's game. license. I'd bring it back. I would, yeah. Mac oh. is my girl. Um, yeah, so I, I'm hoping like this is just an eye opener to the types of games that we could see on different consoles and how they could still work. Of yeah. course, now, like especially the time we're at, the whole thing that's different with arcades and different with playing at home is that you don't have someone else to play with you. Um, so you know you have to make sure online is good. Um, and yeah. of course, that's something that Nintendo is still figuring it out right like they don't know how to make that work for them Mm -hmm. um while being like family friendly i guess that's what their main hurdle is yeah um okay so then we have a lot of there's a lot of battle toads love in the chat (laughs) i know there is everyone's like battle toads yes lots of battle toads never never beat battle that's the one game that has actually made me rage yeah (laughs) the original you should you should try the new one it's a lot more accessible it's okay. a lot more accessible and a lot more fun in my yeah. opinion because I, I didn't like the original whatsoever. Okay. 
<laughs> and difficult to yeah it was the original was really hard and i think even going back to it and understanding it's still hard even as you're an adult like it's yeah. still hard to maneuver if not more um yeah the accessibility on the first one definitely hurt you but like steve's saying the new one is really good it's on game pass Mm -hmm. um so yeah so if you have game pass you could play it there um we also got the longing which is kind of like the animation of the longing is just so cute because it's like this bug-eyed little guy that's all grim like um so pretty much like the main character shade um you know you have to wait 400 days um, for your king to awaken. And while you're waiting, you explore like dark caves and compete with like, or you complete time-based uh, puzzles and collect items and stuff. So it's like a cute little game, um, which a lot of them in this indie world is cute because it's coming from indies. So you're going to see a lot of different things. Um, mm -hmm. Hindsight is one of those games that I think is going to get a lot of people's attention. Um, this is from yeah. Annapurna yeah. Uh, Interactive. Um, so obviously they made some great games in the past. Um, so they have Hindsight as well as Last Stop. So, um, you know, to give you guys a little look, that's kind of what the game is and what you could expect from it. We also have Aerial Knights, Never Wield, and um, Fez. And yeah. Go back really quick for yeah. Annapurna. Please. Yes. Please, if you do anything, play Florence. Yeah. You can get it done in like 15, 30 minutes. But as far as mobile games, I have never been so captivated by a story and the way that a story was told, especially yep. in a mobile game, mm -hmm. as I was with Florence. It, it It's a masterpiece coming from such a small studio and doing it at such a small scale. If like... If, if you want to try something new, something story-based, something quick, it, you do have to pay for it, but it's cheap. Mm -hmm. Go support them and try it out before you try Hindsight and Last Out. And so you, this is surprisingly great game. Yeah. And I feel like they're continuing kind of that legacy of great storytelling um, with Hindsight because Hindsight is, I know I like kind of speed past it, but Hindsight's about a woman that's kind of going back in her past through connecting with objects. And mm -hmm. she's talking about like, her family through these different objects. Um, so I feel like I'm gonna cry. I feel like we will laugh, <laughs> uh, but it, it's, I I feel like based on what we've seen with Florence, you could kind of expect high hopes from this and Last Stop as well, where you're dealing with in Last Stop, uh, three strangers. Um, and it's kind of like a single player adventure uh, story uh, told in London. And mm. you have to kind of figure out what connects these three strangers. Um, so again, probably going to be heavy in storytelling and probably will have some tears flowing from my eyes. <laughs> Definitely. Um, we have, um, there is no game wrong dimension. Um, this is kind of like a cute little animation style. Um, it's a point and click comedy adventure filled with riddles, um, as well as puzzles. And you kind of get to explore that and that's actually available on this nintendo switch so indie world has this habit of doing like just um announcing games and then automatically having them on the switch so that's one of them beautiful shadow yeah, drop cool. nintendo's so good at them they yeah, they I are the meta, i love the meta nature of that game right it's like because games like portal like really had that like meta fourth wall breaking that caters to it and then there's games that don't do it well at all and mm -hmm. there is no game looks like just a very fun not serious take on being a meta fourth wall breaker game <laughs> yeah yeah um so overall there were 20 games announced at this indie world other than the ones that we talked about or if you guys want to dive deeper into the ones we talked about was there anything else that like kind of caught your eye and you're really excited for uh, I, I am actually like, I'm cause I'm just kind of like looking through everything again mm -hmm. and Ollie Ollie does look like a lot of fun. <laughs> like, Mal when Malik was talking about it, I was like, this looks like one of those games that you put just a little bit of time into, you know, like 30 minutes at a time, but yeah. it's so worth that. Just that just a little bit of your time. I don't know. It looks like a lot of fun. And then of course, I mean, Ninja Turtles, like yeah. I, for, even though I'm still waiting for like a full fledged triple A open world Ninja Turtles game, that is I'm still really excited for another little uh, side scroller beat em up because just like I said, there's there's always a place in my heart for those arcade style games. Uh, one that uh, popped into my radar was Skull uh, yes. the last 
the hero slayer um i thought that game like oozed its own style i thought it was really cool with the gameplay where it's a 2d uh roguelite but you switch abilities by switching like your skull because you're like a little skeleton guy i i just i just really loved the the animation mm. and the gameplay of it that one really stuck out to me and then oxen free too of course mm-hmm. um very unsuspecting but if you guys haven't played oxen free one of the best storytelling um within like an indie space as well um and i just wanted to point out like props to nintendo just for being like this indie house yeah like they're playing to their strengths they know they can't compete in like the triple a space by bringing in all these like major uh triple a the third party studios we're gonna we're gonna cater to the indie audience and host things like this like every time they do an indie uh, world showcase or something akin to this there's at least one or two games that speak to nearly everyone i imagine unless mm. you're just a snob and you just don't like indie games um but yeah there's always something in there that's that's a gem yeah so i really appreciate what they're doing for the indie space mm-hmm. yeah and, and we need we need somebody to do that because yeah. i don't want to say that nintendo and the switch is like the starter step for indie developers but since playstation has taken kind of a big transition uh, especially in leadership this Mm -hmm. is a good way for games to show that they have what it takes to get on something like xbox game pass or to get a spot in the playstation plus lineup right yeah you're absolutely right like we've talked uh last week or the week before about how you know some some companies just aren't doing enough for that smaller space uh playstation specifically um and you know Um, I'll bring up this later on when we move on to like kind of like um, what's the standard for the industry. But Nintendo is really good about having these indie worlds and it's just about indies. And I think what that kind of when you hear like um, a Ninja Turtles game or remake for House of the Dead, it kind of reminds you like, oh, my God. Yeah, these are indie studios that are pulling out these games. Right. Um, And it gives you that spotlight as well as Nintendo then does these sales. So they make it accessible or they'll put out demos. These studios will work with Nintendo mm-hmm. to put out demos on the Switch and I think it's just really great and that's kind of the way we have to go um, in order to get different games and explore different options um, for people. Mm-hmm. We were talking about demos. What happened to demos? Well, apparently they're all on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, <laughs> I guess <true>. so. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Yeah. Caboose, what if, what if oh. you got a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game exactly like the Batman Arkham series. Well, that's exactly what I want. That's what I want. And I want it to be made by, I want it to be made by Rocksteady. I want there to be a black and white mode to call back to the original Ninja Turtles comics. I want, that's, listen, I love Ninja Turtles being for kids and that that's like, that there's always that fun element to them. But in its conception, it was a dark, like gritty, almost violent story. And I would be down to see a game that explores that side of the Ninja Turtles while maybe still playing on the fact, you know, someone like Michelangelo is maybe a little more of a lighthearted character and give me that open world aspect, being able to switch between all four turtles, you know, if if anyone could do it, it would be Rocksteady. Absolutely. 100%. I I couldn't think of a better studio. I would be down for it. I'm still on the fence if I would want to see that. But you know what? If there's any studio that would do something like that, it would be Rocksteady. Um, But yeah, I feel like that's probably not happening. (laughs) 